uh, now what we are continuing with the last portion where we had left in this section what we are going to do is we are going to uh, set up FTDs okay we have got two FTD we are going to first give the basic network okay configuration for management and then what we are going to do is we are going to configure the two FTDs we are going to register them to FMC and then we are going to go to FMC console and manage both the both of them okay and towards end we'll be uh, deploying them for active standby that so what do we do now is uh, what you need to do is you need to get to the console of FTD1 at this point okay just log in the logins are same as it is for SFR module we have seen in the previous class right so username is admin password is capital A and D M I N in small one two three done after this after logging in it will ask you to accept the license just say yes you will come here at this point in, in the part of system setup it will ask you to set uh, the password for admin account so let me set the password Ah. okay now it will ask you uh, about do you want to configure ipv4 address yes do you want to configure ipv6 no ip address uh, we are going to give it manually so yes enter and the ip address i'm going to give is 192 168 100.94 subnet mask slash 24 gateway is 192 168 100.1 mm -hmm. made a mistake we'll have to come and do it uh, let me begin this again Yes. Shucks. Oh, God. yes no manually yes ip address 192 168 100 dot 94 uh, slash 24 uh, this should be dot 1 which is 100 dot 1 uh, name is virtual ftd1 uh, dns is dot 45 so let this come up firewall will go in routed mode and we are good to go our FMC is on dot hundred, no dot eighty four. Okay, so we'll be connecting it to the FMC, which is which we are accessing from here. So FMC is at dot eighty four. So let me log in into FMC and. Hopefully it's done. So let's get back to FTD one. So similarly, what I've already done is this portion I've already done and kept for you. FTD two. Okay. So I think it's in the background. So 
so ftd2 i have already done and kept ftd1 i just now demonstrated how to do it fmc is already ready so all you have to do is begin with ftd1 configure manager add 192 16 168.100.84 and give the key Cisco FTD FTD Okay so this key could be of anything of your choice but make sure you remember the key For the each device will have that different key can be same different depends on you but Make sure you remember the key because you have to give the same key on FMC as well. Okay. Similarly, so see, please make note of the registration key as this will be required while adding device in FMC. So the key is Cisco FTD. Let's do it on FTD two as well. Same command. and you're good to go so let this come up what i'm going to do is i'm just going to minimize them because i'm not going to do anything else on these consoles i'm going to do everything on fmc console here okay so on fmc console you need to go to devices and device management this is a continuation of what we have done for asa sfr module okay so you guys can go back and check the registration the licensing part the smart licensing and classic licensing so you need to go to smart licensing and you can put it in evaluation mode and then add okay this is from the last sections what we have covered in this section what we are going to do is we are going to add fmc so what i'm going to do is first of all add a group so this shows how do you add a group so probably i'll name it as that's how you create a group group created okay now we add a device click on add device here give the ip address come on What's the account password? Admin and password. One ninety two one sixty eight hundred dot ninety fourth FTD one. Hmm. Key was Cisco FTD. and policy let's keep it this for time being we'll go and revise it later on this we had created yesterday in the last class and add them to group edge ftd add it to edge ftd we, we did just yeah just now we did it right finally give the licensing and register this so that will come to this group here Okay. Repeat the same thing for dot ninety five, which is FTD two. So, um, where do you create the group? Click here, add, and use the last the option. Pages. Last option, add group. Or you can add the devices and then put them in the group. Either way around. the device get added
okay device registration complete reloading the list so you should see ftd see you see a hit count you see account increase to one right so let me just open this folder here ftd1.94 sorry we have done it yesterday so i am i am using it from the last one okay. i'll again revise it so we'll assign a different one but let it go for timing let it be the same one okay similarly what i do is i again click on add and click on add device i click on host here and give the ip address of 192 192.168.100.95 which is the second device okay I also put it in the same group give the same network discovery policy and give the licensing and register the second device so once this finishes up we can start setting up this as per the topology so what we going to do is we are going to set this up okay so we are going to configure g1 and g2 that will that will show you how to configure redundant interface using fmc so we'll be configuring redundant interfaces redundant one will give ip as dot 10 uh, then we'll group these two g1 13 and 14 and form redundant interface 2 then we'll be configuring sub interfaces for redundant 2 which will go to vlan 150 and 151 depending on your environment you can go on doing that okay then finally here also we'll create another redundant interface 3 and we'll again subdivide it okay for two of the vlans i'll not show for everything 178 and 78 then we'll see how to run dynamic routing how to do a uh, route filtering and then finally we'll do nothing and access control followed by high availability all right so hopefully it should be up by this time so I'll, i'll just pause this let it come up so once this is up i'll resume okay so finally i have two of my devices up here let the registration complete and then we begin with the setup for the devices <coughs> all right so we're good to go two devices 94 95 uh just give some time there should be a policy pushed okay it's already in progress you can check here okay so let it complete and come back meanwhile what we are going to do is we are going to go to so you will see a policy here <coughs> okay that's being pushed in the back background uh So let's begin with FTD one. So click on the device. Done. Let me adjust this. Uh, let me put it in full screen. <coughs> 
Okay. So here, what you need to do is, as per the diagram, you need to click here. So basically here, you will find your device information. Okay, it's in routed mode. The licensing, probably you can click here and remove the licensing. The health status, this is our separate policy. We'll yeah. talk about it in, in yeah. another video. Uh, this is a management interface. And so, so let's go to the interface first, very first. Click on add interface here, and you're going to create redundant interface. Click on redundant interfaces, make sure it's enabled here. Give a name here, redundant one and this redundant one this will be for this segment here redundant one all right which includes first and second interface so redundant one security zone we did not create this this is created as a separate object so click on new and give the security zone name This is your untrust zone outside. Okay. Very first thing. Number which interfaces will come in redundant so this includes G00 and G01 next nothing ok so redundant one so I click on ok here first scroll down it gets added here this is your redundant one right so there's the same interface for your redundant one which is here which includes these two interfaces all you got to do is what here give the IP which should be as per this 192.168.112.10 so 192.168.112. good okay as a part of this g0 0 0 and 0 1 you typically need to connect here and all you need to make sure is it's enabled enabled and same as for g00 it is enabled okay save this configuration okay hmm? next segment is what this segment here hmm? three four one two is done three four we have to configure so which is which is actually not three four which is actually two and three of the firewall so zero 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 one is done zero two and zero three we have to do so again redundant interface two there's no security zone here right now for this one there's no security zone I'm just going to create a redundant interface okay um, G02 and G03 Redundant 2 includes 0, 2, 0, 2 and 0, 3. We are going to subdivide this interface. So zone will be for sub interfaces. I'll show you that. 
done there is no ip don't give any ip here you are just creating redundant interface too you are just doing this portion you are just doing this portion now you will go and do this section here okay so let's get back so you should see redundant interface 2 added here you see redundant 2 this is for interface 2 and 3 right? 0, and Zero one. 1 yeah 2 and 3 now redundant 2 click here and sorry now click on add interface and click on sub interface ok this is redundant 1.150 let's create the first one sorry 2.150 let's create this one 2.150 so this is just a name ok 2.150 and I'll just for to make it make some sense I'll give the name of the zone so yeah, give me a minute so let's say this is your let's say this is DMZ 1 here and this is your public DMZ okay so no so I'm, I'm just giving a name here let's say DMZ 1 this is just a name now you have to create actually a zone so click on new give a name here this is the name okay you want you can add description router r1 and r2 in dmz1 not required anymore that's a good part i'll show you everywhere it's zero i will we'll go to the command line and we'll check okay uh now what you need to do is sub interfaces so which interface is this redundant two okay over here you need to give what id this could be any value between this important value what really matters is this tag this should be 151 if i'm not wrong this is in 150 right so it should be 150 so this should be one and this so should be 150 done this really doesn't matter you can come up with your own uh, numbering scheme i would use the same 150 so your interface becomes redundant 2.150 that's the id for interface okay and it will accept any traffic which is coming with the vlan tag of 150 now you give an ip so it's 10.150.1. I guess 254 if I'm not wrong. Dot 254. Yeah, good. Dot. And you click on. Okay. <coughs> if you scroll down, you should see redundant 2.150. Redundant 2.150 with IP address. Last one more thing, what you have to do is another sub interface. Again, give some sensible name as 2.151 public DMZ. It was 151, right? Yeah, it's 151. Okay. Now, here you need to give another zone. I'll give name as let's say public DMZ zone. Okay. And you can give a description here. Shh. You can give a description here like uh, public DMZ. interface is redundant to I 
ID I again mentioned so same important values VLAN tag it should be 151 and you assign the IP address which is 10 151 1.254 slash 24 finally submit scroll down you see it here right last is these sections over here okay so again I create redundant one is done two is done I'll create redundant three okay it's a sport channel but should be redundant three over here so again what you do is click here click on redundant interface give a name here three no zone nothing only redundant ID three and the interfaces four not four and five sorry uh, four five are for failover six and seven four and five are for redundant Good. Hmm? Good up till this point. I'll just save OK. And now we'll create some interfaces for redundant 3. One will be dot 78, another one will be dot 178. Okay. So click on add sub interfaces. This is where it will matter. And uh, give a name redundant 3 uh, 178. And I'll give some name, let's say uh, inside one, no zone. This is for, for subnet. What is that? Mm, what is the subnet inside? 172.25.178.0. Select the interface which is redundant 3 interface ID which is 178 what really matters is a VLAN tag which is 178 okay you need to give a zone here so the zone is let's create a new one I'll say inside one inside one okay hmm. and now give the IP address which is 172.25.178 dot dot 10 or dot 254 dot 254 dot 254 slash 24 done okay good Another sub interface, let's add it quickly. R3.78. Trust one. Zone I'll put as new. And zone name is trust one. Okay. And after this, you can say for router 4 subnet just to understand you can give a meaningful description there interface is redundant 3 ID is hmm? is no this is not for the, for router 4 sorry this is for another subnet this for subnet 172.25.78.0 slash 24 okay uh, this is good this is good this is 78 VLAN tag is 78 and IP address is 172.25.78.254 slash 24 click OK click save Done. Okay. 
done yeah okay uh save is done and now what you do is FTD one. So this is the command show network. This will show you the management uh, interface configuration for you. Okay. So if if you s you can see here we have configured forty five as DNS. We have configured V FTD one as the host name. Uh, we have configured dot hundred dot one as the management gateway. And it's enabled. The IP address here is dot ninety four for FTD one, dot ninety five for FTD two. Okay. And these commands are same as it was on ASA. Show interface IP. Show route. show access list okay show access group sorry sorry okay there's no access group you have to say okay you can also check this oh uh, show So someone was asking me. I told you, we, we, you, you won't be able to modify this, right? Application level mm. uh, gateways configurations, but but you need to s see that it's already included for you, so you don't have to really worry. We you used to do fix up, right? That you don't need to do it, at least for ICMP. It's already added. For we disable the ICMP. You filter, no? I'll show you. Deny. Okay. okay. Deny there. No worries. Here it's allowed, but in the from the FMC you deny it. Okay. Uh, show translations. Sorry. Okay. So all those commands are still there for you. Okay. So what we are going to do now is get back to the FMC. And what we do now is, how do you deploy the changes? So you have certain changes done. How do you deploy them? You need to click here, deploy. You need to select. So everything will be here. You need to select what device do you want to modify. So this is the only device where you have made some changes. That's why it's shown up here. If you make changes to three, four platform at in one go, so it will show all those devices here. So right now we have made only changes in the configuration of virtual FTD one. So it shows here, and the most of the configurations are changes are related to like interface. Okay. Hmm. So select and deploy. Okay. The progress for this you can you can see the progress for this here. Click on this, and you should be able to see. Only when you deploy it, yes, until then it's with FMC. Okay, so we have done this portion. Yeah, let this come up. One thing, what we'll do is we'll we'll test the direct connectivity. If it is pinging, then we'll go and set up the next portion of it. Okay, so let this complete. And once this is done and this is up, uh, yeah. We are going to then go and test. So once this is done, you can probably use this refresh here, this control here. Okay, to detect the changes. So you should see all of them to green. 
so there are only two three status uh, so right now it's gray nothing is there there is a red which means there is some error and green means it's all good enough okay so so this this error is okay it says uh, the interface two redundant two redundant three they are not receiving any packets and all this is okay uh, this is as a part of the policy okay so the i'll show you that there is a specific time if you don't receive packet for that period of time it starts giving this warning here okay uh, which you will you might not get in in a will not get it in a production network because production network it will be a complete float so in if you see this error in production network then you need to worry here it's okay we do not have any traffic generated that will come to these interfaces so that's why you're getting this error once you start testing sending some traffic it will not okay <coughs> sorry so wait for this to complete <coughs> G3 is okay. Why do we have problem with G00 and G01? Okay, one of them is used. A down. It's enabled over here. Okay. There is no problem here. We configured both of them in redundant one, right? So so these two go in redundant one. then 2 and 3 goes in redundant two so only one of the link is used 7 uh, and 8 is also in redundant so no 6 and 7 is also in redundant so we need to check there is something wrong with 3 and 0 0 and this is typically uh, in the what do you say vm side esxi machine okay something wrong with the interface Uh, let me save this is that not because uh, only one link is used no 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 even if one link is used it should be up the status here is down okay. do you get this see we have all uh, we we have put 6 and 7 in redundant right yeah. and both of them are up physically do you get this L1. yeah so it's it's a l1 error layer 1 issue Mm okay we'll fix that but meanwhile I still one one interfaces are up so we can go ahead and at least test this so minimize this very first see here so this is the configuration what we have pushed right now So interfaces are configured. Unfortunately, the interface G zero zero is down, and another interface is G zero three. What we are using is down. Okay, so yeah. So now comes the testing part here. So we have router one and router two, isn't? So let's first go to router one. Let me do one thing. Let me take the console off router one. Router one is in one fifty or one fifty one. Hmm. One fifty dot. Fine. So this is firewall interface, which is being able directly connected. Mm, next, so R one is okay. Next, we need to test for this server. 
which should be actually in 151 right so let me pull this out Let's check once. Okay, it's not as we are expecting it. So, okay, it's here. So, let's just change. Um, it should be 10 dot. this is again the firewall and we need to test it from inside right so for inside you can take router 3 enable Cisco show IP interface brief okay so we have the two sub interfaces there 78 and 178 here right let's ping from both of them one seventy two twenty five seventy eight two fifty this is one of the interface uh, trust one interface of the firewall and this is internal one interface of the firewall good up till this point okay so let me just pause this and fix the try to fix the two interfaces which are down for firewall zero zero and zero one something wrong there so so the interfaces were down not connected and i'm not sure if it's at least now it's connected yeah now it's connected and another one was this right no, yeah now all of them are connected so going back to your server and doing a Did we make any changes? No, right? So uh, we did not make any changes. So this will, we know this will come up. Uh, next thing is the routing. We have already configured the routing protocol on the routers. Let's configure it here also. So we are running OSPF process one. You have different OSPF roles to choose here. Okay, I guess everyone should know this internal router within an area. Okay, so zero, uh, your ABR area border router. Okay, another role what could be played here is ASBR autonomous system border router, wherein it's connecting two different, two different. Uh, routing protocols like EIGRP, OSPF, and uh, OSPF and RIP. BGP and OSPF and so on and possibly your firewall might be in both the roles or multiple roles so that's possible okay so each device can be in multiple roles can okay depends on the area to area okay so it can be both in ASBR and okay so this is manual process here yeah you need to specify the role 
then the advanced settings you can do it here okay like for your firewall router id uh, maybe you want to set some router id for firewall mm, let's say okay uh, then making changes click on add here let me bring it here process 1 area id 0 okay and what networks do you want to run in area id 0 now this portion is an object on your fmc i'll show you that okay but you can add it from here <coughs> okay so if you remember one of this dot 78 we configured as trust and 178 we configured as internal if i'm not wrong uh, probably better we should check so you can quickly come to object management here yes i want to leave it unsaved because I'll come and do it again and you can come here network so we have already can we have created a zone called trust one on your FTD which is dot 78 for VLAN 78 so VLAN 78 is trust right for that I add an object here add object and I just say trust zone subnet and the network here is 172.25.78.0 slash 24 that's for trust zone I create another object here okay and this object I'm going to create for this one this for this interface which is dot 178 here inside one so go back to network click on object and click on inside one subnet which is 172.25.178.0.24 okay Good. done we have two subnets in DMZs which mm -hmm. are these for which we have created these two zones one is DMZ1 which is one, VLAN 150 and another one is public DMZ for which the zone is VLAN 151 pub DMZ so let's create one object for this one 150 so add object and this object I would name as DMZ1 subnet and I'll give the subnet as 10.150. It's 150, right? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, 10.150. 10 Correct. So 10.150.1.024. <coughs> and I add another object called as. Just on name and uh, what do you type here? Once ten dot one fifty one dot one dot zero. That so all those objects what we need is ready. So if you're deploying it, the very first step is come to this control here, object and after adding the devices, come to object and object management. Do all those things here. You remember we were creating the zones. Actually that portion should be done over here. By coming to interfaces. And adding the zones here. That portion is supposed to be done here. And then used over there. Like external internal. This we are using for the next generation IPS. Virtual next generation IPS. 
दीज इंटरफेस डीएमजी वन एंड ट्रस्ट इन साइड वन पब्लिक डीएमजी एंड ट्रस्ट वन दीज वी आर यूजिंग ऑन एफ टी डी एंड सो ऑन ओके सो गोइंग बैक टू डिवाइस यू डोंट नीड टू सेव दैट इट्स ऑलरेडी सेव ओके दिस वॉट यू डू यर इज समथिंग वॉट यू नीड टू सेव सो कमिंग बैक हियर एंड गोइंग बैक टू अवर डिवाइस वन going back to routing process 1 internal advanced 8888 okay this is okay click on add here <coughs> os pf process 1 but area 0 Uh, normal and from here you can find that subnet it was one was inside subnet 1 and your another subnet which was supposed to be in area 0 is your trust zone subnet 1 right it is once it's 78 and 178 subnet Which is in area zero. It's seventy eight and one seventy eight, which is in area zero. All right, so we are good. Uh, that's it. If you are using authentication, probably in the next section we can check this. And what you do is you click on. Okay. Uh, this I'll show you where to use this. Click on okay. Mm, this is one. Click add. OSPF process one area ID is one, and the zones. What you use here includes DMZ one and both of this. One is one fifty. One is one fifty one. They both go to area one. Yeah, yeah. We 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 have made a mistake here. This one, it should be A B R, and then you add here because it's connecting two areas. So area one, 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 add. And there you go. Uh, what do we do now? Next is okay. Finally, next what we do is we click on save over here. <coughs> so this is about dynamic routing. Next thing is about static routing. So for static route, you click on static route here. You click on add route. It's a IPv4 route. The interface what you are going to use is wow, redundant one. Which interface? Default gateway, redundant. One. Okay, and we are going to give one IP which is not here in the diagram, which is two twenty four. So one ninety two, one sixty eight, hundred and twelve dot two twenty four. Redundant one, and gateway for any subnet. The gateway is one ninety two. you want you can add it as a object as well these objects are created for uh, ftd right once we deploy these all will be uh, pushed to <coughs> but can be also used in pushed pushed to FTD, FTD. Yeah, yeah. FTD. They will be in the FMC as well. So that can be used for other devices in case. Mm, yeah, objects are just for reuse, reuse purpose. Reuse. Like if if you are if you are doing it in multi tenancy, even then the objects will be available. 
okay so they are shareable actually finally if you are doing some route tracking you will have to use this control we, we are not targeting it at this point so just click on ok and our route is added okay finally click on save here and yeah and now what you do is you click on deploy select deploy okay and so if you want you can One place will be router one where we can check this. Router one. Another place will be router three. So, do I have the console? No. Let me take out the console router 3. And let's take the console of router 1. Do you see? Adjacency is up. Who is 888? FTD. So this is router 1. This is router 3. Router 3 also it's up. Okay. Uh, what else? should come up uh, we have to check it on FTD one console no. You can see the routes, OSPF routes from your neighbors, which are router 1, router 2, uh, router 1, router 2, router 3, and router 4. Okay. Mm. The static route, what we have given. Uh, what I need to do now is mm, let's put them in the HA H and then then you can just configure the policies on one which will be synced to uh, another one so for that what you need is you need to go back to your server here FMC device device management what you got to do is These are still these are still not up, should be up, let's see. Yes.
if it doesn't come up we'll have to remove and put it back again but should be there uh, <coughs> so I'll just pause let, let it come up and then we'll uh, next section will begin with uh, the HA deployment here okay <coughs> 